Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. You can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. Contact us and let us know what you are learning so far. Today we are on day five of this week's Daily Torah series called Pekku Day. Yesterday we discussed the completion of the tabernacle, God's presence amongst his people, and the future testimony of the two witnesses. Today our Torah portion continues with God giving Moses step-by-step instructions on the raising up and taking down of the tabernacle. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Exodus chapter 40, beginning in verse 1. In Exodus 40, verse 1, we read, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put it, it, you shall put in it the ark of the testimony and partition off the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it. And you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put on the screen for the door of the tabernacle. Then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen at the court gate. And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it. And you shall hallow it in all of its utensils and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offering and all its utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy. And you shall anoint the laver in its base and consecrate it. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister to me as priests for their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. In verse 16, Thus Moses did, according to all that the Lord had commanded him, so he did. Now my friends, God is a God of order and detail. Look at the creation all around us, the intricate designs and details of the smallest insect to the biggest land mammals on earth and under the sea, Each is uniquely and intricately designed. This passage reflects the meticulous obedience to God's instructions in constructing the tabernacle and consecrating the priesthood. It also points to the ultimate high priest, Yeshua, who fulfills these types and shadows in the Messianic context. His is an everlasting priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek which we covered in detail a few weeks ago. Through him, we have access to God's presence and forgiveness of sins. Now, let's turn to our half Torah portion in 1 Kings chapter 8, verses uh, starting in verse 14. In 1 Kings 8, in verse 14, we read, Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel, while all the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and with his hand has fulfilled it, saying, Since the day that I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there. But I choose David to be over my people, Israel. Now, my friends, Solomon acknowledges that God had promised David that his descendants would rule over Israel forever. 
the temple is a fulfillment of that promise as it becomes the central place for worship and the dwelling of God's presence among his people. He also emphasizes that God did not choose a specific city for his dwelling until now. Jerusalem, where the temple stands, becomes that chosen city. However, this also points forward to a greater fulfillment, the new Jerusalem, where God's presence will dwell will dwell eternally. When Solomon mentions David, it foreshadows the ultimate son of David, the Messiah. Yeshua, the true son of David, fulfills the promise of an everlasting kingdom. He is the ultimate temple and the true dwelling place of God among all humanity. The temple's purpose was to honor God's name, and in the Messianic context, Yeshua perfectly reveals the Father's name in John chapter 17, verse 6, and he brings salvation to all who believe, as Paul mentions in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. My friends, Solomon understands that this time in history not only celebrates the dedication of the physical temple, but also points forward to the greater fulfillment in Yeshua the Messiah, the true king, the eternal temple, and the fulfillment of God's promises. Now let's turn to our Brit Hadashah portion in Revelation chapter 15 uh, in verses 5 and 6. In Revelation chapter 15 verse 5 we read, After these things I looked, and behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened, and out of the temple came the seven angels having the seven plagues clothed in pure bright linen and having their chests girded with golden bands. Now my friends, just as the fulfillment of the building of the tabernacle and the first and second temples were met with many challenges and minor setbacks, so too are we at a point in human history where the whole world is groaning in birth pangs, awaiting the building of the third temple and the return of the king. God is orchestrating everything accordingly, and we will get there. It will come. Nothing can stop it. Not the UN, not the globalists, not even Satan himself can stop God's plan for all humanity. My friends, if you haven't listened to our series on God's plan for humanity on the Daily Torah channel, please take some time to do so. In it, I go through each holy day and how Yeshua fulfills each one culminating in the ushering in of the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem where we will all dwell together forever. So my friends, let's end it here for today. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Pray for us in this message to go out and pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah and their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. If you are not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, just hit that little uh, subscriber button now. And hit the bell so that you will be alerted every time a new episode is posted. Now remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes, download the Daily Torah schedule. You can also order the Daily Torah series of books to follow along. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or donate button on the website. Tomorrow we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings and Shalom, my friends.